In this episode, we'll be taking a look at GitHub issues and GitHub discussions which recently came out from GitHub Universe. Interested? Then stick around as we find out more about both of these topics. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and we will be talking about all things cloud. So once again, we're going to move swiftly on here as we delve into these few topics that we're talking about today. So let's just switch over to the screen and take a look at uh, the cloudwithchris.com GitHub repository, because I think that's a good way uh, for us to go and take a look at both GitHub issues uh, and GitHub discussions. So GitHub issues have been around for quite some time. Uh, and the idea behind GitHub issues is a way for the community to kind of interact on uh, different aspects of the project that need to be worked on. So different issues, if you like, you know, it does, does what it says on the tin there. Um, and then GitHub discussions recently came out uh, from GitHub Universe. So let's take a look at both of these in the context of cloudwithchris.com uh, and really what it means uh, in terms of how I use them and how I guess any open source project might go and use them. Um, so if we just navigate over to cloudwithchris.com, um, I've recently changed things on cloudwithchris.com um, and in particular, this get involved section. Uh, so I've got a section on suggesting a topic and I've got a section here on becoming a guest as well. So if I just uh, control tab open these. Previously, I used to use Calendly uh, and I also used, I think, an office form just to go and submit that information. And they both worked, but um, it was quite closed in that sense. You know, was that information was coming directly to me uh, and then something would go and uh, happen with that. Um, but what I wanted to do was make sure it's a more of a community feeling. And that's really where GitHub Discussions really shines. Uh, so GitHub Discussions is in beta at the moment. Uh, and it's very easy to go ahead and turn on for your repository. Uh, you just need to go into your repository settings, scroll down, and you will find that you have the uh, discussions option there that you can go and turn off or on. Um, and then again, of course, you know, we spoke about in a previous episode, uh, GitHub sponsorships as well, which you can do the same there. So what I've done with GitHub discussions here is I've set up a, a few categories. So there are a number of categories that you get out of the box, um, but I've slightly tweaked these just to make sure they're relevant for the cloudwithchris.com repository. So as an example, I've got one about episode ideas. So if anyone wants to suggest new episode ideas, they can come in, they can start a new discussion over here. Um, and for things like guest introductions as well, uh, you know, you want to become a guest on the show, then that is another category again over here. Uh, and then there's things like Q&A, you know, if there was a, a discussion that we had or a topic that we had and you wanted to find out more about that, uh, then the Q&A area is a nice place for having that open community uh, discussion around, you know, what did you mean about this in that particular topic or that particular session uh, and getting some dialogue between either myself as one of the hosts uh, or some of the guests that we bring on to the show as well. Uh, and then show and tell which is a bit more of an open discussion so really what you can see here the idea with github discussions is the fact that they are open and this is really the idea is it's a way that we go ahead and engage our community uh, because if you think about github issues if we just navigate back to that one here um github issues I like to think of as a little bit more like the backlog of work that we are working on. Um, so for me in cloudwithchris.com, it's uh, the episodes that we've agreed, you know, with uh, potential guests or speakers uh, that are going to be coming up on the show. And it's then putting them into different milestones, putting them into different projects and, and really starting to lay out the plan of delivery of those things. Um, and that's where in these uh, particular issues for example uh, we'd go ahead and add some additional information which issues relate to each other uh, which issues um, are assigned to different folks for example uh, like you can see for example the cube-based load leveling pattern is assigned to will which will be coming up over the coming weeks um, 
you can see that this is more focused on the actual project itself rather than the community, if that makes sense. So there's a slight difference between the two. So GitHub issues, let's just focus on these for a moment because there's a lot of value that you can actually get from GitHub issues. Um, they're very, very simple. And I like that about GitHub issues because I don't want a really complex uh, area that I have to go and manage and figure out, you know, whether this is in uh, this sprint or this sprint. Um, because it's an open source project, I want to keep things pretty lightweight. And, you know, there are integrations with some of the more enterprise type tooling, for example, like Azure DevOps, where it has that deeper set of uh, iterations and different work item types and all these things. Um, this is just a set of issues, a set of items, and you can associate labels with those. So as an example, let's go back to the Q-based load leveling pattern here. Um, what you can see is this item is assigned to Will Eastbury. It has a label associated with it uh, called Mini Series Architecting for the Cloud. Uh, it's associated with some project. It's got a milestone associated uh, and no linked pull requests. And we can see the participants in that as well. So assignees who is actually owning that piece of work is really what we're talking about there. So uh, that is assigned to Will because he's going to be the guest for that particular uh, session there. Uh, the labels uh, we'll come back to in a minute are a nice way for us to filter down and just get uh, different views on the issues that we're working with here. And then the projects, uh, again, we'll talk about in just a moment because projects uh, give us that kind of Kanban style of working. And uh, I'm a very visual person, and this is something that really is a great benefit for me. Uh, from a milestone perspective, when are we expecting that to be completed? Uh, so this is an episode that I am hoping to release in December. So I've uh, targeted it towards the December 2020 milestone there. And uh, if we look even further down, what you can see here is we can lock the conversation. You know, we that conversation's closed. We want to go ahead now and just lock that from ever um, opening up there. Um, whether we want to pin the issue so that it's available for all to see at top glance in uh, in the repository. Uh, we can transfer the issue to another repository. And we can also convert to a discussion. And this is quite a nice feature that let's assume that someone had previously opened an issue uh, with a label of something like um, question or community or something that isn't necessarily related to the implementation details of what we're trying to do here. And it's more community driven and discussion based. Well, that's a prime area to go and convert that uh, from an issue into a GitHub discussion. So that aspect and that functionality is there. So uh, really good to see that the team have thought of that. So let's just navigate back through this uh, issues list here. Um, so you can see I've got a number of filters. I can go and filter based upon the author. So who actually uh, created that? I can go ahead, or not created, but I guess uh, uh, may even be assigned as well. So if we look at Will Eastbury, uh, I know it is created this one actually, um, assignees we've got over here. Um, so for labels then, we've got things like uh, the mini series that I just mentioned about architecting for the cloud. And what you can see is these filters on the top get updated as I select more and more of these uh, different drop downs. So maybe I care about those items that are releasing in December 2020. Well, here we go. These are all of my open items where uh, they're part of this mini series architecting for the cloud uh, and they part of the milestone December 2020. So you can see how this all starts coming together in terms of uh, this experience to go and filter down and hone in on those particular issues that I want to go and see. Now, I mentioned projects as well, and projects is another thing that we can filter on, but we also have a tab at the top of our GitHub repository for projects. And I particularly like this project view. So if I come in and take a look at this mini series architecting in the cloud one pattern at a time, um, you can see that I've got this Kanban view of the issues that I created. So I can go and create these uh, items on my board. So uh, this is a new item for example, and it's not automatically a GitHub issue. It can just be a standalone uh, item in the project board here, um, but I can easily convert it to an issue if I like. Uh, so I can get those things like labels, the milestones, etc., uh, and get all of that value there as well. 
I'm going to delete that one for now. Um, but as you can see, there's a number of items that I have in progress and working along here. Uh, and again, what you can do is you can go and filter down based upon um, when those things are happening. So what milestone, for example, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my filtering <laughs> off the top of my head isn't very good, but you get the idea. It's the same filters that we mentioned uh, a moment ago there. So really then, what we're seeing is this kind of integrated experience between projects and issues. And of course, remember that we can take an issue and move it across to a discussion as well. And as you would expect, you can go ahead, you can go and drag and drop. So for example, uh, I'm actually filming uh, some of these uh, this week. So I'm going to move those to in progress, for example, here. Um, and we can go ahead then and just really get a clear review of that backlog. And I can, of course, add more columns as I like as well. So um, I've kept it really simple to do in progress done. Um, you can even add columns where there's some automation in place. So things like uh, pull requests, things like issues, if they're opened, uh, they can automatically go to a certain column. Uh, they can automatically be removed uh, or closed or these kind of things. So um, you can be very, very clever with what you do with these uh, GitHub project boards here. Now, the other thing worth calling out is we've talked in previous episodes about GitHub Actions. And GitHub Actions is not just uh, to do with CI, CD. Yes, that is a big factor, uh, but you have a lot more different triggers that you can go and use as well. So, of course, you have your schedule triggers, you have your on triggers, so on a push, on a pull request, on these types of things. But you could, for example, um, say any time that a project event occurs, something happens. You could say, for example, any time that an issue event occurs, whether that's an issue uh, being opened, being deleted, being transferred, uh, being reopened. And this is where you can get really clever with these GitHub actions and automating them. Um, and these are things that I'm already doing, for example. So I automatically close uh, certain branches once there's been a pull request being merged, for example. Uh, and I'm always looking for more and more examples of how I can go and use GitHub Actions to make my life easier. Um, one of the examples that I've already uh, raised to the GitHub team publicly on one of the GitHub discussion boards is I'd like GitHub Actions for GitHub discussions because it would be great if I could go ahead and trigger some kind of workflow when someone raises a topic suggestion that either sends me a notification, sends me an email, or does some kind of back-end processing uh, to add that to my backlog or, uh, you know, something that happens there just to make it trigger as part of my workflow that I need to take action. Um, so again, I haven't thought through the whole process yet, but opening up that idea of being able to use that kind of functionality uh, would be absolutely super and is something that I am looking forward to. So that in a nutshell really is, uh, I guess, GitHub discussions. GitHub issues and GitHub project boards, uh, all very valuable in terms of helping you move forwards and manage your projects and work with the community. Uh, so again, you know, this is just one example. There are, of course, many open source projects out there that uh, could really leverage and use these benefits. And even if you're doing some kind of inner sourcing scenarios, um, that might be something that you want to look at as well with issues and project boards, etc. You can see how some of these features could be uh, really useful in terms of collaboration and working together as a team, which is, of course, a big part of DevOps. Uh, often people think about CI, CD and the deployment side of things. The people and the process are important, if not more important, and uh, they really underpin uh, the idea of DevOps there. So with that, um, that is really what we wanted to cover in uh, the session today. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening in. And as always, please do like, please do subscribe, uh, and please do pass on to others as well. If you think this content has been useful uh, and you want to see more similar topics, um, then please do pass it on. The more views, the more likes we get, the more it encourages us to do similar types of content. So with that, Thank you for watching and until next time, bye for now.